authorized. All right, first things first, we're going to take these two panel lobe screws out of the bottom of the phone using a panel lobe screwdriver. That's always the first thing. Uh, the iPhone 5S, like the iPhone 5 and the iPhone, some of the iPhone 4S models and iPhone 4 models have the panel lobe screws in the bottom uh, securing the screen in. Okay, now uh, we want to lift the screen and uh, uh, get it out of there, but we want to be super careful about the home flex cable, which is there. We're using an iSesame. This is a particularly thin tool to get underneath between the screen and the frame so that we can really just start to pry. You can use any kind of pry tool that's thin enough to get in there, uh, like the iSesame tool is. You can use a double-sided metal spudger for that. Uh, you can use any number of different things, but we like this tool because it's very, very thin. So now we've got the lift rather than using a suction cup because the glass is entirely too broken for that. Uh, we've got this thing to lift by just getting underneath and prying it. But now as you see right there, this is the thing to watch out for. Don't lift it. Don't lift the screen any further because what you see there, uh, we're trying to get a good shot of it, is the uh, is a home flex cable. It's a flex cable that controls the, the home functionality as well as the touch sensor, that fingerprint sensor. That right there is a shield that we're going to take off with a pair of tweezers. That shield kind of just holds that home flex cable in place. It just basically lifts up as you see. Once we get a good hold of it, we'll sort of uh, be able to launch it the heck out of there. All right, there it goes. It did a launch. And that's where the, uh, the home flex cable right there is plugged in. So we're going to try to get a good shot of that and get uh, the, uh, the iSesame tool and any, any other pry tool and just pry it up like that. That's it. It's just a cable. It pries up. Please rewind that if you need to see it again and pause it if you uh, uh, need to pause it. Now we're going to take the four screws out of the shield. Once we've lifted the screen, there's a, a small shield covering the LCD and digitizer cables. That's got four screws. We're going to take those suckers out. On the iPhone 5, uh, it was a, a, there's a similar shield in that spot, but it only has three screws and doesn't extend to the top left as much as this one does. So a little bit of variability there. Okay, so we've got all of those four screws out. Note that the screw all the way to the right on the top is not magnetized. Uh, so note that. Now we're going to take the shield out and expose the, uh, the cables for the LCD, the proximity sensor, and front-facing camera, and the digitizer, which we're going to take out. You just peel those out. You can peel them with a, a thin tool, a plastic tool, a double-sided metal spudger, preferably something that's uh, ESD-proof um, so that you don't shock the, the device because there is that small chance. Now we're going to take out the battery because that's kind of what we always want to do first on this. We just had to get the screen up in order to get to it. We don't like to work on devices with batteries connected. It's always, it's always best to sort of take them off. So there's two screws holding a shield that goes over the battery connector. And, and we're not going to take the battery out. We're just going to unclip that connector right there. So now we know we're, we're safe. We've got the screen off. We've got to take this home, uh, home button assembly uh, off with it. There's one screw there that has to get taken off and then a, a cable that folds back once you take it off. Then there's the two screws that hold in the plate, which holds in the home button. Um, the, the first screw that we took off kind of stays within, it should stay within the flex cable as you see it all the way to the right by the technician's uh, pointer finger and that screw stayed there. Okay, now that we've got those two screws off, uh, we're going to proceed with taking the screws and the perimeter of the device, which hold in the shield uh, that goes over the LCD. We're just going to take those screws out. Those are just super small screws you can use with uh, any, any standard Phillips head screwdriver that is made for small components, small devices. Uh, some of those black handled plastic uh, uh, ones will work. We like to use a little, uh, little more... Uh, a little more quality tools for that stuff, but you can basically use anything that'll fit to get those screws out. Now we're on the right side, we're gonna take those uh, two right hand side screws out of there. So we can get this job going. Okay, and I think we only have one more left on the uh, on the sort of the middle right there. We're gonna get that screw the heck out of there so we can take that shield out. All right, so the screws are out uh, now what we want to do before we take that shield out is we want to take the screws out from the top. This screw here actually still secures the shield. It's part of the shield. So we want to take that screw off the top right here. And then we want to take the screws out of the speaker assembly. That's the speaker assembly. So there's one screw right there uh, on the top that we have to get out. It's pretty long. And then we've got the, uh, the screw right to the right. That is the second screw securing it in. We've got to take that out. Now, 
in lifting that assembly, uh, there are basically a couple grooves which we're reaching in with a small flathead screwdriver that we need to kind of pull out. That little clip right there is kind of wedged in. So we're pulling it out to your right. We'll be sort of pushing it to the right. And you'll see here in a second. See, there it goes. It pushes out. And now we've got that clip essentially out of there. So now we can sort of proceed with pulling this thing out of here. There's also a similar clip to the left, which we're kind of shimmying around as you see that clip that just came out. Uh, so we can get the speaker and the speaker hold uh, the heck out of there. Now to take this home button assembly off of there, it's, it's slightly adhesed to the frame. So we're going to put a heat gun at about 300 degrees Fahrenheit and give it just a little bit of heat. See, that was not a lot of heat that we gave it. We just wanted to give it enough heat so that, so that it's, uh, it's hot enough to pop out of there. We don't have to rip any cables and trying to take it out because you've got to take this entire assembly out. So get something thin, double-sided metal spudger, i-sesame tool, or something uh, similarly thin. Uh, uh, pry that wire up on the bottom, and then we're just simply pushing through on on the reverse end that the, the hole, the home button, to get the rest of it out. And now we've got it out. Here is something interesting. We're going to heat the top of this because now that camera flux cable, the proximity sensor flux cable, that has to be heated as well so that we can pull that off. But what we're going to do is pull the entire frame with the front-facing camera and that assembly on it. So first, we want to get under that under that that cable there with the four copper-looking, um, uh, gold-looking connectors. And we just want to very deliberately and very carefully kind of get underneath it so we can pry it up. It's adhered to the frame uh, underneath where those two little uh, white-looking plastic prongs are pointing up. And now we're going to pull the entire assembly as one. Check this out. The camera... Uh, the front-facing camera and that, that cable stays on the frame. This way you don't have to rip it off. You don't have to rip anything off that, that, uh, that other piece of black tape over the frame. You take the whole thing out. Please go back if you need to look at it, pause it, and uh, ensure that you know what you're doing. Here is the new assembly. We are taking off the film that comes on new assemblies uh, on over the uh, bottom of the LCD. And we're going to put a small piece of adhesive right where that camera flex cable and proximity sensor flex cable is going to go so that it adheres back to the frame. All right, so we put a small piece of adhesive there, we peeled it off, and now we're going to proceed with putting uh, the whole shield back on, which has that assembly on it. You see, that's the shield that still has the assembly on it because we didn't rip it off or take it off. Now we get to put the shield directly back in place, seat that front-facing camera right back in place in the camera hold in the spot where it goes, and then secure that cable down over the adhesive that we just put down with the two holes there fitting in the two upward-pointing uh, white prongs. As you see, we got a little closer there so you can see what the hell is going on, and now we've really got it good. We've really got it secured in there. And the whole assembly is in now. The whole shield is in. That tape over the left, we don't have to take any of that off. We don't have to do any of that. It comes as you can, you can take it off and put it back on as one unit, and we found that to be the most effective uh, and certainly the most uh, speedy. I'm just kind of trying to fit this frame in there to make sure that that shield uh, is fitting correctly within the frame, and uh, looks like uh, we've got it. So now we just have to secure it in uh, by doing the reverse of what we did and putting the speaker in and all those uh, all those screws in. But first, we're going to go to the home button. Let's fit the home button in. Uh, make sure it's aligned. That definitely isn't aligned, so we got to kind of just get in there and shimmy it with our fingers. The good thing about this is that there is no home button design on this, so it doesn't. It, at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because it's still going to look great and it's still going to function great. But uh, you know, for awesomeness' sake, we want to make sure that it's 100% aligned either way. Okay. So we've got that thing aligned, uh, it's in place, and now we've seated the right side of that home flex cable just how it was. And since we still have that screw over to the right, the screw's still sitting there so we can flip it back over and plug it in. But first, we're going to put this frame in, the, I mean the, uh, the home button kind of uh, shield in. It's got two screws to the right and left of it, uh, which we're going to use to, uh, to plug them in. All right, so we're going to go to the left screw, the left side first. Just trying to get a good shot there. Okay, screw that one in. Now we're going to go to the right side. Screw that one in. Now that home button is secure. And now we're going to fold this cable over with the screw still in it, as you see. Uh, and screw that thing in. That, that connector to the right, it's a small little copper-looking connector. It's a silver-looking connector. That thing has to be in a specific place for the touch sensor to work, for the fingerprint sensor. So note the place that it's in, and note the technician moving it right now with tweezers to get it to be exactly in that place. That's how it should be, just like that. That's critically important.
Okay, so now we're going to do a home button test. It presses and we can move on from here. Looking good, looking good. That's how it's supposed to look. Take a picture. Okay, so uh, now what we're going to do is we are going to put the screw on the top right of the frame. We're going to just try to secure this frame in. That's the screw we took out in the beginning. Um, we're going to uh, put the other screws into the left and right sides of the frame uh, so that we can keep that, that silver looking shield secured in there and uh, keep everything working right. That screw uh, did not want to go in, so we're going to have to uh, stop it from being a trickster and work our magic and tell it that, no, you are going in. You are not going to not go in. Okay, uh, Okay. so putting in the rest of the screws here on the shield, this is pretty self-explanatory. Make sure you put them in the right place uh, initially so you know which screws are going to go into the frame when you're screwing everything back together here. Um, and that's what we're doing, just just putting screws back in, just putting these these small perimeter screws on this uh, on this shield that goes over the LCD back in. Trying to get as close up to this as possible so you can see what's going on. If it goes in and out of focus, it's uh, it's just because the camera focuses at one point, and then if we move it away from that point, it'll lose focus a little bit. But we're uh, I think we're doing pretty good on this one. All right, so now the four screws are in, in the perimeter of that shield, and uh, we're going to put the speaker assembly, the earpiece speaker assembly, uh, and the holder back on top of the uh, of the new of the new screen assembly, so that we can uh, make this thing work. That's the speaker itself. So we lay the speaker down first, put it in place, ensure it's all aligned, and then we're going to take. Uh, the top shield, that top small little shield, just trying to get a good shot here. Wait for stabilization and put it over. Now we got to make sure that those those latches on the right hand side kind of fit in exactly like they did. If you see, as you see, Rob's uh, uh, the technician, Rob Williams is uh, working on uh, putting his his right middle finger kind of to get that latch secured on the right side there. Uh, so that this thing stays in place. Also, that latch on the left-hand side needs to be secured as well. Uh, it's, it can take a couple times. As you see, we're kind of just fussing with it to make sure that it's in place. And once you've got it in place, you'll know because it, it all those screw holes line up and it feels like it isn't moving. All right, so we're going to just sort of take it out, make sure everything's aligned on the bottom, have another go at this to make sure that this thing is, is in place. It's critically important to do this, and that's why we're really making sure that this thing is fitting correctly. A uh, good technique is to go in from the right first, which uh, uh, the technician that's working on the device just did, and then uh, go in on the left. <clears throat> All right, so now that we got this thing secured, we know that those latches are latched down. Uh, we're going to secure it via screwing it in. So we've got one screw on the top. Uh, that secures the top of it, and then we've got another screw that secures the rest of it on the uh, just on the bottom right there. We're gonna put in. <clears throat> All right, screws are in, and we are ready to go. This entire assembly is straight. We want to flip it around and look at the camera. It's a hundred percent aligned. If it isn't, you can unscrew the top screw there and just move the camera just a little bit uh, so that you can. Uh, uh, get the camera to be just 100% in. Uh, what Rob's doing there is just tightening it 100% because he wanted to make sure that that camera was aligned and now it's, it's time to tighten it. Okay, so now we got the device uh, uh, ready to, to uh, be reassembled and um, we're just gonna do a side shot here of putting these cables back in. You just wanna really carefully plug all those cables back in, uh, the digitizer cable, then the LCD cable, and then the front-facing camera and proximity sensor cable uh, as well. It goes in the exact order, uh, the exact way that it came off. Pretty self-explanatory. Make sure they're all plugged in with your fingers, though. You're really going to make sure they're completely plugged in because they can they have a habit of being halfway plugged in and seeming like they're fully plugged in. And then when you put the shield back on and turn it on, you get, like, touch functionality problems. You don't want that. Okay, so now that we've got them in, we want to put that shield over uh, the cables and uh, just get one securing screw in there so that we can uh, uh, do the rest of this. We like to choose the bottom right because it kind of puts it in a place where everything else is aligned and the thing doesn't freaking want to move. So now we can uh, take the rest of the screws here and secure uh, the rest of the shield and we're going to go for the top left one. Okay, we're just going to finish putting these screws in. As you see, the screen replacement on the iPhone 5S is really not that big of a deal. It's not that much different from the iPhone 5 with the exception of that home flex cable and a couple of other things. 
but at the end of the day, doing it deliberately and doing it carefully and, and watching a tutorial like this, so you know, you, you get a close-up shot of exactly what's happening. Um, that's the way to go. We tried to do this as close as possible so that you could really get a look at the phone uh, from the perspective of somebody working on a phone. Now we got to close the screen. We're going to plug the battery back in so that that thing has power when we go to turn it back on. And now we're going to put that shield, uh, that that uh, shield over the over the battery connector, and just plug those two screws in real quick. Again, we we there's been problems uh, known to happen on the iPhone 5C and 5S when you keep the battery connected uh, during the uh, during a repair, and we've heard that that's because the phone actually doesn't turn off when you turn it off. It, it The new iOS, uh, iOS 7 and up, kind of has this mode on it where it uh, looks like it turns off, but it's really on a deep, deep sleep, so you want to pull the battery out because it's actually still on <laughs> when you're uh, when you're working on it. Even though you turn the device off, it's still on. That's what we heard, and, and we're not playing any games, so we're going to follow that advice. Okay, so uh, so now we got to plug this this uh, home flex cable in if you fold the device over and you're about to close it you can you can what Rob the technicians working on has actually a uh, his finger we're gonna get a little closer shot has uh, the ability to get his finger in there line it up with the hole where it plugs in on the charge port as you see right there he's lining it up and then just clips it right in and you can use a double-sided metal spudger eye sesame tool something similar to get a hold of it maybe even some tweezers I like to use tweezers when I do these and um, and that's it. So now it's plugged in. We know it's secure and everything's going to work. And we have to put that shield over. The shield is a little bit of a pain in the butt. It's got to go in a particular way as you see Rob's kind of moving it around. Uh, and if you pay attention, there's like one kind of divot on it. There's a groove that is uh, in the front there uh, on the right-hand side. And that, that's how it has to go. So Rob's just trying to position it over that home flex cable now. And then it'll push in and secure uh, once he's got it. So he's got it positioned right there. And now he's going to come in there and just, we got a better shot of it now. We can just push it in. There it goes. So it pushes down and secures over the home flex cable like that. You'll know it's secure. Just like you know when you clip things in, clip these LCD cables in and some of these cables in that, that they're secure. Now we're going to proceed with uh, closing the device. So we've got uh, uh, everything in place. We're going to close the device. You simply just push, uh, push everything back down. If it's all aligned, it'll go in. You may have a little bit of trouble on the side. You just kind of, kind of shimmy it in and make sure it's good. Uh, uh, hopefully, you're using original quality stuff so that everything fits correctly. We use nothing but the best because of that, and uh, and now we've got everything good to go. So the next step would be to uh, put in those uh, uh, those two bottom pentalobe screws. Uh, we are nearly completed here with this repair. Uh, we're going to turn everything on and uh, check her out, and everything should be good to go. So we're putting in this uh, bottom penelope screw, just trying to get the right placement for it so it goes in, it doesn't strip anything. And there we go, we got a nice snug fit on that one. And we're going to put the uh, bottom right penelope screw in, and we are in between third base and home. All right. Okay, so now we've got the device put back together. Everything is looking good. We're turning it on, and we've got the infamous Apple logo. And that right there, friends, is a sign of success. You